back with the third episode of my cooking show, Eat Like a Girl. How did you put that combination together? Well, it's really simple because it's basically all my favorite things. Ah, uh, yes! <laughs> you could have been called good this. <laughs> Literally just went I'm like doctored. Me. So wait, can I help? Oh. All right, so watch, pop that in there. And now I'm terrified to say that you're gonna do the same thing with that garlic clove. <laughs> <laughs> well, but actually kale is controversial. Tell me. Because it has a tremendous amount of lectins in it. These foods are proven. Uh, this yeah. isn't a theory. These mm. foods are proven mm. to help you live a long life. Okay, good. I'm glad we agreed on that one because because okay. <laughs> we just did a whole cookbook together. We probably should have had this discussion. <laughs> Why put a, you know before we put the put the recipes together? Okay, YouTube. I am back with the third episode of my cooking show, Eat Like a Girl. And I have literally, I brought you two really fun people, but I now brought you a professional chef. This is Chef Leslie, and she is one of the brilliant chefs that contributed to Eat Like a Girl. She's gonna show actually my favorite, and it was a lot of people's favorite. Uh, when we put this book together, there was a team of people, and this was a signature meal, and it's called a Buddha bowl. And so we're gonna walk through how to make it. So you're gonna literally see from the creator how to make it um, and why you made it. So I wanna talk about that in a moment, and then how it's so healthy and what it can do for your, not only your overall health, but this one rocks hormones. Yeah. Like this one has hormones all over it. Yes, it does. So let's start with what, how did you put that combination together? Like what was the brainchild behind the Buddha bowl? Well, it's really simple because it's basically all my favorite things. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it could have been called Chef Leslie Bowl. It could have been called the <laughs> Chef Leslie Bowl. Uh, but it's yeah, got- but the Buddha's more famous. Buddha's I mean, more no offense. Famous, slightly more famous, just <laughs> slightly. Um, but yeah, it's got all my favorite things. It's got miso, it's got quinoa, it's got tofu, it's got yeah. cabbage, it's got kale, it's got ginger, which I love ginger. Yeah. And so it's just, Got all my favorite things, and I, yeah, I wish I had a more inspiring story. No, but here's it. a little backstory for those of you who get the book. You can order the book now. Um, this is a galley copy, but it's a beautiful book. It comes in all this color. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Um, but what's interesting is the whole team that helped on this book. Everybody was like the Buddha Bowl, the Buddha Bowl. We actually almost put it on the cover because it was the most popular dish in there. Do we not put it on the cover? Well, oh, it is a little bit that next to my face. Um, it's a little bit. Here's the Buddha Bowl right here. So, um, but it was like, there was thought of making the whole cover of the Buddha Bowl because everybody loved it so much. Aww. So, you know, the fact it was all your favorite things, it turns out it was everybody else on the team's favorite things Well, that too. makes me so, so happy you know. to know. Yeah. So, okay, so talk about there is the dressing and then there is actually the other components that we're going to put together. Yes. And so you and I talked about where do you start? Do you start with the dressing or do you just start with cutting everything else? I like starting with the dressing and it also gives you time that if we have our quinoa already cooked, if you've meal mm. prepped it, it's great. It comes together really quickly. But if you need to bake your tofu or cook your quinoa, get those in the oven and on the stove mm. and then make your dressing mm. and then, you know, start prepping your vegetables and then it all kind of comes together at the same time. Okay. It's pre it's pretty easy that way. Yeah. I, I, I'm a no fuss chef. I like yeah. just multitasking, doing everything. Yeah. And actually once. you'll find that in her recipes in the book. Like again, they were, they're easy. They're easy to read. They're easy to make and they're easy on the tongue. Yeah. And they come <laughs> together fairly quickly. Yes, they do. And yeah. they're pretty like, um, one of the ones we're going to highlight for you all is the kimchi at a mommy bowl. And that one I made for a friend and it was like, I felt like I was giving her a gift when she showed up at my house because it was like this beautiful, yeah. I know, it was really beautiful. So I like the bowl idea. Yeah. It's, there's a presentation to it. When, yes. And, and it just feels like a nurturing gift. Yeah, and you can be, you can play with the design of it because we eat with our eyes first. And so, and also you felt that good because 
One of my favorite things as a plant-based chef is that I'm literally feeding people health and I'm yeah. feeding people that's going to make them food that's going to make them feel better. Amazing. And so you probably felt even extra special yes. knowing that they were going to feel so good after they yes. ate it. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, okay. So where do we let's jump Let's cook. In? All yeah. right. So let's make that dressing that we were talking about. So we've got a little bowl and you're going to do part of it and I'm going to do part of it. And I'm the sous chef here. So I'm the novice. Here's the expert. So let's see how this goes. That's okay. I'm going to get you in like a professional kitchen I, at I some can't point. wait. Oh my God. I'm like an experienced gal. I want to try everything. So I, I, I want you to that. try everything. All I right. So that. we've got um, extra virgin olive oil in here, which is the base of most of my dressings. And then we're also going to do um, our acid. And for our acetate, we're going to use rice wine vinegar. Okay. There was a really interesting cookbook that was really popular. We love to give cookbooks as presents in our family for Christmas. And it was I called love that. Uh, yeah. No, we're like it's been actually a unifier in the family. So that we all gather around food, we gather around cooking, like it's just part of our family, you know, what knits us together. Same. So, but the cookbook was like acid and salt, salt uh, fat. Yeah. 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 And it was all about putting combinations together. So is there yeah. a reason when you're putting this together uh, that we do an acid and an oil and then Yeah, cuz it balances everything perfectly. Okay. That that was a great theory and it was a great way of saying it. Um and so, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, so in I put some tamari. Tamari is gluten-free soy sauce, but mm. so you can use soy sauce, you can use tamari. Yep. I would recommend low sodium. Um, always, because I like adjusting the amount of sodium that I have in a dish or salt that I have in a dish. Um, and so that's just a little bit easier. And just so you know, part of, I don't know if you always do you use, always use tamari compared to soy sauce. I do. I actually really like the flavor yeah, of tamari. Uh, I think I it has kind of a, di a deeper, richer umami yeah. taste to it than yeah. soy sauce. Yeah. But if all you can find is soy sauce, that's fine too. So we, but what we wanted to do with Eat Like a Girl is make it all gluten free. So yes. it came down. And then we just so we have two tracks. We have two chefs. We have a plant based track and an omnivore track. So you're seeing the plant based yes. foods here. But it's for everybody. Yeah, but it's for everybody. We're, everybody's invited into the Eat Like a Girl kitchen. Absolutely. I just added in a little bit of agave. You could use uh, maple syrup or you could skip this entirely if you like your, your, dressing to have a little bit more of a tang to it. Yep. And then I'm also going to put white miso paste in. So again, if you have full blown um, salty soy sauce, be very mindful of the amounts of salt that you're going to add into this later. Okay. So I'm going so to drop miso that. Paste. That's miso paste. And okay. so that's fermented soy. And so it does also have kind of a stronger right. saltier flavor, which I really appreciate and I like. Um, and then you're going to do the fresh ingredients okay. that we've got going two, in. Two things I want to say before we uh, mosey on from the dressing. Um, umami. Can you talk about that? Because like what you haven't heard behind the scenes is that my 22 year old son, uh, son is becoming a chef. So cool. And so we've geeked out on the tongue. Yeah. And he's like, mom, umami. It's the best taste because it fills up the whole tongue. Mm -hmm. So is that true? Like how yes. do you, do you, can you, when you are putting ingredients together, are you thinking about how it's stimulating the tongue? Yes. So your mouth and tongue have different points in it as well. And placement of where you have sweet in the front, sour on the sides, um, and bitter in the back. And the okay. new mommy kind of fills up everything. Right. And so that's why when you taste wine, um, or mm. tequila or any, a scotch, you want to keep it in the front of your mouth mm -hmm. um, because you want those flavors hitting those parts of your tongue. Okay. And that's why like when people take shots, they hate whatever they're shooting because it just directly hits the back of yeah, their throat. Yeah, it doesn't throat. hit the taste. It doesn't hit the, the sweets ah, and savory. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so you're getting that. Okay. So there is method to that. And you so want your whole mouth excited at the same time. When you put a dish together, do you think about how can I stimulate like as many places you do think of that. Yeah, absolutely. Which is part of the mastery of being a chef. Well, you know, a little I'm bit. I'm trying to pull it's out the artistic, for It's the artistic part of it, okay. yes, and the experience of it. So then this, that leads me to the second thing, which is fermented miso. Mm -hmm. I just learned actually helps make a, stimulate a um, microbe or a probiotic in the gut called l ruteri or Lactobacillus ruteri. Mm -hmm which actually then goes up to the brain and stimulates oxytocin. Yes. So here's where my brain is going, is like we look at something like this and we've, we're hitting the tongue, which is hitting umami, which is actually creating, umami creates a dopamine hit in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting the miso, which is a fermented miso, which is also stimulating oxytocin. So if you like are having a bad day, 
Or you want to eat the Buddha look, bowl? Eat the Buddha bowl because <laughs> Chef Leslie just figured out how to stimulate a neurochemical reaction in your brain that's pretty profound. And I don't know if you knew you were doing that, but um, I didn't. But I totally did. I totally, <laughs> did. totally did. Exactly. So, anyways, just take, okay. What am I supposed to okay, do? Okay, you're going to grate in some ginger and some garlic into this dressing as well. And again. Okay. We, we are going to use a little bit of black pepper in this, and I'll sprinkle a little bit in now, but I'm going to wait to add any salt until after we've whisked it together and tasted it to see if we even need it. Okay, now I asked, do I need to take the... Um, the, the um... I don't bother taking the skin off as long as you wash your ginger really well. The skin has fiber in it, too. Well, I also think there's different nutrients in the skin, right? Yeah, absolutely. So... Yeah, why am I not so good at this? <laughs> Literally just went I'm, I'm a doctor. And I, I don't just play one on TV. <laughs> I'm not a show. That is amazing. You have what managed to get thing? it everywhere. I know. Except for in the bowl. Okay, so wait, can I help? Oh. All right, so watch. <laughs> Put your, put your micro grain, grain, a micro plane grater on something Thank to brace. You. So you could do this here, or you could do this okay, here, or you could do this over rough. this. But so you want to do small strokes. Ah. So if you just do it like this, you're only going to get it into the bowl, Mindy. So I'm going to have you try that. Instead of using the entire surface, just... Small, smaller, smaller, just a little. Okay. Back I and hope forth, my back son and forth. isn't watching. I may have just made him not very proud of his mother. Okay, so see, oh now it all stays there. there. We, but it was so cute watching you do that. So <laughs> we had to let it go. All right. Okay. So now we're going to pop that in there. And now I'm terrified to say that you're going to do the same thing with that garlic clove. <laughs> Okay, but I know now. Now you are going to peel the skin off. Okay, the so combo. the skin, we have a tube at home where you put this in a tube and it goes. Yeah. And okay. You just need to bruise it. Oh, tell, can you show well, me Well, we're not going to bruise it because we need to, we need to just stay firm and grate it. But if I was going to chop this by hand, then you could, that's why chefs bang it with the end of a knife or okay. smash it between two pans. Oh, but, to get uh, that easy, yeah, easily get it off. I have long fingernails, so I'll just do this. But in the meantime, do you want to talk about something else so it's not completely <laughs> boring watching me peel garlic? Okay, well, it, here's a fun fact about garlic is it's an incredible prebiotic. So prebiotic is any food that feed the good bacteria in your gut. So if you are, like you've been on a course of antibiotics, um, I'm big on women who have been on birth control for years. It destroys your microbiome. You're going to want to bring a lot of garlic into your diet because it'll feed the good bacteria so they can grow stronger. Mm -hmm. um, it's also great immune, great for it's antifungal. So it's really funny because if you have like candida and you crave sugar, um, the antifungal properties of garlic is amazing, but then it, it also kills the fungus, but it grows the good bacteria. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a miracle food. It is a miracle food. Oh, I think it goes in the top 10. I think it's in the top 10. Yeah. I think okay. it's for sure Okay, we've been trying to figure out today if the other, the avocado goes in the top 10, lemon goes mm -hmm. in the top 10, and garlic. Garlic in the top okay. 10. Yeah. There we go. Okay, I like this top 10. I know. I don't I know do if too. we can limit it to 10, but I think we, 10 is a good number. Okay. Um, all right, so one other thing about garlic that I love that okay. when you're talking about health benefits is that I will eat it raw. So if I am Ooh. even Again, slightly another, feeling... Another reason to get it. I know. <laughs> I'm single because I eat raw garlic. Whole, whole <laughs> Sorry, I'm really garlic. excited for you. I think that's great. Okay. You think it's great that I'm single or no, that I'm eating well, raw garlic? Oh, I'm not trying to get everybody <laughs> paired up. I'm just, you know, go to the other videos. You'll, you'll, you'll see more. Uh, go to the, we, we have a few videos. Um, profiling it always Chef comes Leslie. up that I'm single. <laughs> Don't know how that happens, okay, Minnie. I love that you eat it. Yeah, so if I am even remotely feeling run down or if I feel like something is coming on, a cold or something, I will take a whole, well, this is a very large globe of garlic, but I'll get the smaller ones and I'll just swallow them like pills and oh, I'll, I'll swallow like three. I don't chew them, but I'll often like cut them and then do it. And I know you get, it comes in faster when you chop Probably. it. Probably. But if you live with someone or you do have someone, eating it whole definitely yeah, helps it, with the breath. It makes you kissable. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so <laughs> notice that we're going to leave the stem end on that you would typically want to cut off because that's the end that you're going to hold when you grate it. Okay, um, can I get a second try? Yeah, and you don't need to grate the whole thing. That's a, well, I call for one clove, but that's a very large clove. Look, I'm doing Look it. at that. She's learning. She can be taught. I'm a quick, I, I can be coached. I'm a quick learner. Okay, perfect. That's probably about good. Okay. 
Oh, we're just going to scoop that out with the rest of the pile of ginger there. <laughs> Excellent. I like a lot of ginger. Okay, and then you get, I'm going to let you use my favorite oh, utensil. My favorite cooking is, instrument is like my, I, mini, I feel, my mini whisk. I feel like I've been, uh, you know, anointed. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like she told us how much her, her whisk matters. Okay. Yes, all right. So her little baby whisk, baby Jeff Gray whisk. whisk. Imagine all the recipes this whisk has whisked. It's seen a lot of whisking. Yeah, how many years have you had this whisk? Um, a long time, but this doesn't come in the commercial kitchen with me because oh, you know I'm making things. dressing for 500, not oh, for, and for you one. Need a, so you need a big girl whisk. I have a big girl whisk. <laughs> <for that. laughs> okay. You know we have whisks that are like this big in the kitchen. What? Yeah. Well, when you have a bowl that's the size of you, then you need a big whisk. Oh my god! You gotta get in the, ki- the I know, commercial I, kitchen. With yeah. Me. Okay, I'm coming in the I commercial kitchen. Do you want to see Mindy get in the real kitchen? <laughs> yeah, just I don't even show know. me a few techniques first. So <laughs> we'll I have to figure. We'll no, have to I teach totally. you how to use everything. Yeah, don't embarrass me in a big commercial t- no, kitchen. No, I won't. Yeah. You're gonna come in, and I'm just gonna say, "Hey, this is my new uh, sous chef." And yeah, and teach you the ropes. And then at the end of the day, they're gonna be like, um, "Hey, chef." You might want to think twice about that. I did watch three seasons of The Bear, though, so I do. Oh, feel so like that definitely I know makes a you know what you're doing. That. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to whisk this a <laughs> yeah, little bit harder okay, to great. emulsify that okay, olive I'm gonna, oil. I'm going to tell you something about whisking that I just learned in a podcast interview that I did on on what kind of movement we should do as we age. And the woman talked a lot about how important hand strength was. And so when we're looking at movement through the aging years, um, we need good hand strength. And so whisking, chopping, super important for keeping good hands, hand straight. <laughs> I'm good then. No, yeah, I'm, so you're I'm good. Great. So you're living a long time. <laughs> so that's good. Okay, I'm going to grab you a tester spoon and I want you to try the dressing and then we're gonna see if we need to add salt to it. Cause again, it has the miso in it, it has the tamari already in it. Okay. And so just give it a little. I love it. I don't know what I would add to it. What would a you tiny add? bit of agave. It needs a little more sweetener? Yeah, just to balance the acid just a little bit. I, I guess my palate might not be as sophisticated as Chef Leslie's. I'm super sophisticated, everyone. <laughs> Do you go, you know what my son taught me? Is that sometimes some of the other chefs will go on a salt detox. So that oh, yeah. They, they so you stay can off, taste yeah. more. So they yeah. stay off salt so they can access more of their taste. So somebody uses a lot of salt because I love salt. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, there's a health benefit to salt. But of course, you yeah. need salt. So do you mm-hmm. go on salt detoxes? Um, I don't ho- overly salt my food. Okay. I That is the one thing that I, I don't go heavy on. And okay. I know that um, some people love super salty food when they come to a restaurant. But I want you tasting all of the flavors of the dish and all the ingredients mm, that are in it. And yeah. sometimes too much salt can kind of overpower yeah. and you're not tasting all those ingredients. And so I like to go light. And if you want to add more to it, add more to okay. it. All right. So we're going to set the dressing aside. Okay. I think it's good. It definitely doesn't need any more salt. Um, and so let's start putting together the actual bowl. Excellent. So why I massage yes. our kale. We do, We learned a lot about massaging kale today. So <laughs> can you talk a little bit, and also good for your hand strength, so anti-aging, yes. but yes. talk about why you would massage your kale. Okay, so. Is kale like high maintenance? Kale is really high maintenance. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the, well, but actually kale is controversial. Do you know that in the health world? Tell me. Because it has a tremendous amount of lectins in it. And, uh, okay, so let's talk about lectins and oxalates because I think you and I might agree on this. I hope we do, or else um, this is going to so be an interesting I, video. Yeah, so I actually brought Stephen Gundry onto my podcast, and this was a couple years back, and I had one, one goal, mm-hmm. and that goal was to really help my brain settle in on how could nature provide a poison. Mm-hmm. Like, it just didn't make sense. So I asked him, I said, does everybody need to stay off lectins and oxalates or only people who have really dis- challenging guts? And he goes, thank you. He's like, everybody thought they should just avoid these high lectin and oxalate foods. And my point with the plant paradox was to really teach that there are poisons on certain vegetables like kale. And if you have food allergies, if you have a leaky gut, if you have gut dysbiosis, you might want to avoid those until your gut heals. Well, it wasn't worded quite that I know. succinctly. In the Maybe book. that was after two years. After um, the and then there were also a lot of doctors that supported that. But yeah. I, I think that one of the most important studies in nutrition that's been done 
in our lifetime is actually the Blue Zone studies. Yeah, yeah. And Dan is a friend, and I think what he's done is amazing because it is it is these foods are proven. This isn't a theory. These mm. foods are proven mm. to help you live a long life. Yep. And the all of the blue zones around the entire world only have one common ingredient that they all eat. Oh, what's that? Every day. Do you know what this is? Is it going to be kale? No, it's beans, which oh. are high in lectins. Oh. And so you're telling me that all the people that are living to the longest are eating beans basically yeah. every day. But then this doctor comes out of nowhere and says, don't eat beans. That so is fascinating. That made my flags go yeah. up and be like, mm, yeah. maybe not, maybe yeah. not so much. And I'm not knocking anything that Dr. Gunder's done. And I know he's helped a lot of people with severe leaky gut and SIBO. Which would make sense. Which would, would make temporary sense. get off of it until you fix that yes. and then go back. But on. I think it miss, uh, a lot of people self misdiagnosed yeah. and stay away from it when beans provide so much nutrition, so yeah. when kale provides so much nutrition yeah. and you're probably fine with it. So yeah. it goes back to as well is that you have to create a personalized diet yes, for right. you. That's right. Not There is no answer for everyone. That's and right. so you have that. to figure out you yeah. and go from there. Yeah. And, and legumes are amazing for hormones. Yeah, like especially progesterone. You need that legumes to help build progesterone. So mm-hmm. I agree with you on that. Okay, so. good. I'm glad we agreed on that one because yes. it's going to be rough if we did. Because okay. <laughs> we just did a whole cookbook together. We probably should have had this discussion. <laughs> Why put a, you know before we put the put the recipes together? But yes, okay, massaging the kale. Okay, I'm going to massage the kale, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to have you microplane some um, purple cabbage. Do you trust me? No, <laughs> not after seeing your ginger performance. <laughs> Do not cut your finger off. <laughs> okay. okay, so see this like dry, loose end? We're gonna yeah. pull that off because okay. that's just gonna get stuck in our microplane. Okay, this is extremely sharp. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna hold just the top okay. of it. Okay, and you're gonna go this way on it. Okay. Okay. All right, and we like don't a, need that much. I feel like much. a little kid. We only need about a half a cup. There you go. Look there you go. Ooh. All right, so then that I'm gonna drizzle well. a little bit of olive oil on that our kale, well. and I'm gonna take a pinch of salt. Did you massage it? I'm about to massage uh, it. You first oh, you, you have, have to put to your massage oil on Massage it. oil, a little salt exfoliant. Get on that, oh, those right. kale leaves. This is a very <laughs> small bowl to massage, but I'm, I'm going to make it work. And then you just press it. And what this does is it helps break down some of the fibers because kale is very rough. Yeah. And so if you eat it raw, um, some people have a harder, that is way more than a quarter of a cup. Excellent job. <laughs> Okay, I have another funny story to tell you about <laughs> kale since we're on the topic. So I did an Instagram live with Stephen Gundry. Okay. And right before I jumped on it, I had a kale salad. <laughs> and so literally in the live, I had kale in my teeth. <laughs> and and my team is and my husband are like sending me texts trying to warn me. <laughs> and here I am talking to a lectin guru with kale in my teeth. That I mean that's <laughs> Pretty amazing. It was pretty good. And he didn't say anything. So that tells you I think he's a beautiful man. I really love his heart. He didn't say really? anything. Because yeah. I'm the kind of friend that would be like, hey, Mindy. I think he did. Well, but he, this is the first, last, this was the second time I had talked to him. So I had just, you know, anyways, I think he was being polite. He probably didn't know what to do. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, yeah. But don't talk to the anti lectin guy with kale in your teeth. Probably a bad yeah, idea. I'm not a good idea. But got another book for you. It's called Eat Like a Girl. You will now know for your feminine body how to metabolically switch. I hope it helps. Okay, so what else do we need to do? We need to shred the carrot. Okay. And we're, then we're the going to put it together. Jobs. You did get all the dangerous jobs. Okay. Do you want me to do the carrots? No, no. I want to learn. Okay. Well, we can also do it with the mandolin, which will oh. make it super duper okay. fast. Okay. All right. So let's peel the carrot real Why fast. Why don't you show me? And okay. then I want to I want to. What are your to... um, thoughts on uh, wash uh, peeling carrots? Because some people think that the nutrients yeah. in the B12 from the soil is on the skin of the carrot. And some people... Yeah. Just want it to be as clean as possible. I think that there's nothing in fruits and vegetables that was made by mistake. And that everything has, right? Everything has a different nutrient quality to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do prefer a clean carrot when I'm eating it, but mm-hmm. I don't. I but I don't take. I don't peel it because I want the. I want the skin. Yeah. So okay. The one thing we do probably need to talk about is why we don't do baby carrots, which I used to do all the time. 
But I, then I saw that it was actually, it's the center of the carrot that they take out. They put the rest away, so it's waste, so that's mm -hmm. not good. And they chlorinate it. Mm -hmm. They put it in chlorine to clean it all up. Yeah. And so you're actually getting a dose of chlorine in a baby carrot, if you didn't know that. Gross. Yeah, super gross. Who needs that? Right. Not me, not no, you, not, not anybody. Me. No. Um, and also, like, carrots are rad. They're delicious. Yeah. Long. They're like, why do you want And I like them actually carrot. fresh out of the garden where you, like, pull them oh. out, and then you briefly, like, rinse them, and then you eat them. Yeah. The best. The best. It's the best. Okay, let's start assembling. Okay. Are you excited? I'm very excited because you want to assemble. Pretty... Do you want me to assemble? No, I want you to assemble okay. because you're the you're the artist. You'll make it pretty. I know, but I want. But you, yeah, you assemble it, and then I'll tell you what I might have changed. <laughs> okay, Dr. Mindy's about to critique <laughs> how I build a bowl. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay, maybe I should have rephrased that. I can't um, wait to I get critiqued by Dr. Mindy on how to make a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by your ginger skills. <laughs> but I'm thinking that it what is, this is where the artistic expression comes in. Yes. So you're going to show us how you would do it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody who buys the book and does it on their own, they're going to do it with their own special twist. Absolutely. You give them freedom to do that, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I give people freedoms yes. when they cook. Okay. I promise. Good. And I don't judge. So I, it wouldn't be a critique on you. It would be more like, oh, I might have done this different. So far, I would have done it exactly how you're doing it. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So the quinoa, we're going to kind of bleed over. So we've got our big, you always want to go in size. You want to put the biggest thing mm -hmm. in the bowl first. And then you want to go to the smaller thing. Oh, you're so, it down. so we, well, we've got kind of like our mound that's going to stay over here. But now that we're adding these smaller things, we're going to kind of put the quinoa underneath, okay. so it builds it up and it's all the same level. Height, yeah, yeah, it's all beautiful. the same height. Okay, so then let's do some pretty carrots. That's beautiful. I mean, the colors and themselves are so attractive. Well, what do I always say? Eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. And I would agree that each you ha when you look at the different colors, you have to think, oh, each color brings a different set of antioxidants. And antioxidants are those nutrients that help block out the toxic damage that can happen from this crazy modern world. Um, but we also, I want to continue to point out that in Eat Like a Girl, I put something called the Key 24, which is you need 24 different nutrients to make hormones. So when I look at a dish like this, all the different colors, is a, it translates into my brain as different nutrients I need for hormone uh, production. Mm -hmm. Do you want to pass me those snap peas? Thanks. I feel, Thanks, I feel, sous chef. Yeah. Is this how I... Wait, aren't you supposed to yell at me? Isn't that the way it no, works? No, I do not yell at oh, people in the kitchen. You're not a yelling... I am not yeah. a yeller. Okay. That's good. No, I'm a singer. I'm a dancer. I'm a let's have fun in the kitchen kind of a I person. Okay, so there's our base. Uh, and then we're all we're gonna top it with um, hemp seeds, hemp hearts. Okay. But I think we're gonna dress it first. Oh, you're gonna sprinkle it on. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the hemp afterwards. Okay, so these are snap peas. Yes. Um, oh yeah, let's these finish. These are what? my favorite vegetable right now. They're really good. They literally like sugar snap peas. Like when you sit, call them that. I'm like, yes, they have a sweetness to them. Mm -hmm. I buy big bags full of them and I eat them all day long. So if you wanted to like half these snack peas or like cut them lengthwise in half and then just take what's left of this dressing and sprinkle this over just the peas, you'd have a delicious side right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, snap peas are just so they're amazing. Good. They're, they're amazing. so good. And they're so good for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Look at how beautiful that is. Yeah. And then we also added in baked tofu. Okay. Um, you could bake your own in the oven. You can buy baked tofu at most grocery stores. And so you can do it either way. Yeah. We've got a nice um, so protein punch. Something I learned about soy recently. Tell me. Is that it, stop, it stops the blood flow going to tumors. So Dr. William Lee brought him on my podcast. You can go check that out. And he said that the number one food that we all should be eating, both men and women, is soy. Wow. And the reason is because it has the capability of stopping the blood flow to a tr tumor. And the thing about tumors is they can only grow if they have a blood supply. So a daily dose Amazing. of soy is not just getting your, it's a phytoestrogen, so you're getting your good positive protective estrogen, but it can really help in stopping tumors from growing. Amazing. Yeah. I'm just trying to squeeze in a little bit more purple cabbage since okay. we have enough purple cabbage for 15 bowls. <laughs> for 15 bowls. I'm going to eat this for dinner. So. <laughs> and for breakfast. And for breakfast. And for lunch. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Do you like heavy dressing or light dressing? 
Medium. Medium. When I dress my salads, okay, so the one thing we haven't talked about is I do have one, one superpower in the kitchen. It's a, it's a very known superpower amongst my friends and family, and that's salads. I oh. love making salads. You've never and made me a salad. I'll, I'll make you one tomorrow. I'm going to make you one tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And here's the trick. I don't overdress my salads. I yeah. hate salads that are overdressed. Yeah, again, because you can't taste... It's yeah. masking all of the beautiful that's flavors right. of everything that's in there. That's right. Um, and then, okay, so to end it, we're also going to do um, a tablespoon of hemp hearts. Okay, something I learned about hemp, and this is something that I really feel like this needs to get out into the world, is that hemp is packed with protein, mm -hmm. and it has all essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. So there's all a, of them. it's a really interesting conversation. Some of you might be seeing this in the culture where we have this tendency to think that meat, animal meat, is the way to go, only way to go, when it comes to protein because it has all these essential amino acids. But when I dove into the research, I actually saw that hemp has the most amount of essential amino acids. All, all the essential amino acids that we need. Mm -hmm. So, and chia seeds too. Chia seeds all as All the well. seeds, but hemp seeds and chia. Seeds are amazing for yeah. you. Because if you think about it, it's all the nutrients from mm. the plant in the seed. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. That's why sprouts are so amazing too. Oh. You're getting all of it condensed into one bite. And versus it's concentrated. Mm -hmm. ah. Have you okay. ever had um, chia sprouts? I, I have the micro sprouts I buy from the store a lot, and I usually try to do like arugula and I try to vary it. Yeah, so I, I remember chia. like the chia pets like chia where pet. it grows the, yeah. the little um, sprouts. Yeah. We should have been eating those instead well, of like instead watching of them as watching them grow. Look so that. amazing. Look at you. You did such Yay! a good job. That is so beautiful. Okay. Okay. How long did that take us to make? I mean, we're talking, but you, that would You can do all of this in under 30 minutes, baking the yeah. tofu, cooking the quinoa, yeah. everything. And then, I mean, by the time you chop everything like this, you could serve this to your family and maybe put them into a bunch of different bowls. It's very beautiful, yeah, easy to make, and it's got all these amazing nutrients. And in. I'll say also, all you're saying, like, Leslie, if I cook this in 30 minutes, the quinoa is still going to be hot. Yes, and you could do this dish hot or cold. So if you wanted the hot baked tofu in there and the hot quinoa in there and then the other veggies around it, it would still be equally as delicious. So it's summertime. Amazing. We're having it cold, but you can easily have it. Winter time. Amazing. Maybe it's not summertime. When is this airing? Yeah, well, at, on, in YouTube land, people watch it all season long. And then remember, we have the we have two, two different hemispheres. So oh, yeah, some that's people, true. <laughs> some people might be looking at this in okay. winter and some. But I would eat this either way. Yeah, it hot does, or cold. Yeah, it's hot delicious or cold. cold. Yeah. Do you want to try it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, where's, I have a spoon here. Well, what, what, how would you eat it? A spoon or fork? Okay, um, here we I go. Mean, a fork. I'll be okay. more polite on camera, I would think. Yeah, probably. It won't look like food's dripping out of yeah, my mouth. I actually got myself a fork this time. Yeah. <laughs> Mindy never gets I, a fork. I have a problem sharing. Okay. <laughs> How do I get this all on one bite? Okay, don't. I know I'm touching it. So you got to just. That's okay. You got to just like maneuver your way through there to get like oh, a well. bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Isn't that dressing yummy? Oh my God. That dressing mm -hmm. is so crazy good mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. my god okay. you could add a little toasted almond on here too if you want yeah. even more protein oh my god mm -hmm. do you just make this on your own when you're like hanging out in your kitchen well yeah i'm gonna try some of the massage scale i'll let you know how it goes <laughs> see if it's different than my unmassage scale okay let's mm. see let's see yeah you didn't really <laughs> massage it that long I massaged it as well as you want you don't want yeah. it to disintegrate mm. it's softer. but you'll be able to digest it easier yeah yeah, yeah. So it means you don't fart afterwards or get bloated. I mean, so. I was trying to be polite yeah. about just, that. Just bringing it real, making it real. So, oh my God, this is so good. Okay, good. It's so good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even add anything. Like it has everything in it that you need. Amazing. So you're a master. <laughs> you're too so, kind. Eat like a girl. It's ready for order, depending on when you're watching this video. And we have over 100 recipes in it, and the Buddha Bowl is one of them. And Chef Leslie spent a lot of time in creation of this. We literally sat down, looked at hormones, and my favorite statement she ever told me was that there's 23, over 23,000 plants, edible plants, on this planet. And she's on a quest to make amazing recipes. And I told her, and I'm on a quest to teach you how to turn that all into hormonal medicine. Yes, so, I love that. So I we see. started with this. Let me start with this. And I'm a good friend. You have a little kid. Oh. <laughs> See? So don't go talk to Steve McCundry. Right? He wouldn't have told you that. 
I love this one, man. If you love this video, I did a great video called Should You Eat Eggs Every Day for Breakfast? So you need them to make things like serotonin and dopamine, the neurotransmitters that give us a good mood balance, make us happy, make us calm, give us joy and satisfaction. The precursors for those neurotransmitters are all inside this little egg.